everyone. My name is Piotr Zbik and I work at the Greater Sudbury Public Library and I'm thrilled and pleased to have as our special guest for the TD Summer Reading Club, Robert Esme. Wow, that's amazing. Can you imagine that? We have Robert Esme with the Greater Sudbury Public Library right now. And for some of you who don't know, Robert actually lives here in Sudbury. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. Um, we're very thrilled to have you on, Robert. Welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Bonjour. <laughs> I just want to give everyone a little bit of a background, uh, an amazing background, might I add, uh, that you have. So Robert is a two-time world champion, relay sprinter, and 1996 Olympic gold medalist. Robert is also a motivational speaker and teaches speed through his speed uh, teaching clinic called Air Blast Off. Located here uh, in Northern Ontario in Sudbury and all over the GTA area, which is amazing. Um, and so Robert teaches, you know, he's a speed doctor. He teaches kids uh, form, training, all these amazing things to get into the sport of running. And that applies to many different sports as well. Um, the endurance training, everything. So that's an incredible tool uh, for kids and teens and, and adults to have. Um, so yeah, through Air Blast Off, like I had mentioned. And so I'm super honored uh, to have you on, Robert. And I'm excited to uh, tackle these fun 10 questions that we've gathered. And uh, again, thank you so much for being Anytime. here. It's exciting to be a uh, part of your platform and allow me to be part of it is awesome. So thank you guys for inviting me over. Very cool. Um, so first off, uh, I just wanted to kind of also inform everyone that uh, this is 10 questions that we've gathered uh, to help kids and families understand more your world, Robert, of sport and your amazing career. Uh, so let's begin. All right. All right. Question number. Um, all right. Let me put on my seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds there good. We go. There we go. <laughs> all ready to go. Um, so, question number one: uh, Why do you love running? <sighs> I was always fascinated for speed. Um, it's a natural attribute of mine. Growing up, um, I remember when my grandma. Um, we have all the cousins and the brothers and sisters, and she usually go into a little bosom here and take out a little bit of money. I says, okay, we're going to the corner store. All right, here's a little bit of, here's a bit of money. This is what I want you guys to go buy me. The one who can come back here quickly gets a prize and then he can go mm. buy a candy. Boom! <laughs> always win, always win, All right? But guess what? I did not buy any candy. I like to save my money. <laughs> ah. Just in case one day I'm gonna really need a lot of it to buy something, I have it there. That's amazing. And then, you know, a funny story when, um, school bell rings growing up, right? Soon as it ring, you see everybody dash to the locker and who's on the way home quickly to get the food, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's always competitions going on in the house somehow. Exactly. So those are some of the natural things that I enjoy um, mm -hmm. and end up falling in love with running. Over That's the amazing. years, I've loved it. Sometimes it doesn't love me back <laughs> like a relationship, but uh, it's a wonderful sport. It doesn't cost much to do any running right like other sports so uh it brings great joy and release of stress that's funny i'm just going to touch on that really quick so when you would run to the store in competition did that come in your mind at all when you're like you know back when you're a little kid like going as fast as you can to beat everyone else absolutely um when i line up in the starting blocks i think of uh playground right oh, okay. i think of playing tag yeah. when you're playing tag it's a different energy system that you're using. Okay. So either you're the tagger or the taggy, right? You, when you're going to tag someone, you're trying to catch them. Sometimes you may get out of breath, but if you're the one that coming in to, to get tagged, it's like a different energy. You're not going to yeah. be tagged. You're, ah! <laughs> you're not thinking about being tired at all, <laughs> right? So if I'm, be, if I'm running from behind, I'm chasing them, right? Yeah. And my job in my mind is I'm going to catch you before you reach certain distance. And tag you in a sense, right? <laughs> if I'm in front, I'm running away. I'm like, yeah, catch me. You ain't catching me. Spit my feet like a sewing machine. <laughs> right? so, that's an uh, excellent that's tip. Idea. That's an excellent yeah. tip for sure. And that's what I think of when I go into competition so I can keep the stress away and keep mm -hmm. the fun and the yeah. energy high. That's amazing. That's a great advice for sure. Um, keeping it fun, right? It's keeping yeah. it loose and just doing your thing. And then usually, I guess, the outcome's tend to be the best when you're in that positive thinking, right? 
absolutely. Win or lose, but I don't like to lose championships. So I don't like <laughs> losing different competition because yeah. me, I look at it as, as education. Yes. I might grow from it. But yeah. going into championships, I don't like to lose. I work very hard for to win championships. That's a whole I'm new ball game. You remember the championships. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Um, that's amazing. Uh, that's a great answer to our, our first question. Um, I'm going to dive into question number two. Um, and I mean, you must get this all the time. Uh, what does it feel like to be at the Olympic Games? For myself, I did not have a great experience. Okay. Um, there was some things behind the scene that took away mm. the authentic and the natural of enjoying the process of the Olympics. Yeah. So um, that's something I wish I've experienced more in the opening and ceremonies and all the other pieces. Yes. Um, and I, at the time with the leaders that was there, um, they took that opportunity away from myself. Mm. Uh, but the remaining piece of the Olympics that I was able to enjoy was great. Um, to be able to see the crowd, the energy, hearing my mother in a stadium, um, knowing that people from Sudbury was watching, um, you know, uh, 4.5 billion viewers. I'm like, yeah. this is my time yeah. to shine. Yeah. Knowing that during the Olympics, no war, everything is going to be stopped. And the competition and the battle is on the field now. Yeah. Right? This is where the, the war happens right here. Yeah. Um, people cheering for the countries and the different things and to see the victory. So feeling like honored that I'm representing Canada, just like, you know, uh, in a sense, you're going to war to represent your country, to protect it. We're yeah. On the field, we're, it's like we're going to go do that because the war stops when the battle of the competition comes together. Yeah. So that, I'm, I'm wearing my, my jersey, my uniform. And I'm yep. going into battle and I get my relay baton like my sword, right? <laughs> and I look around and see the energy and see that I captivate the audience by my blast off haircut and writing my own script in a, through that whole pieces. And to see all that come together was amazing. And cool. see the reaction of the crowd and, and knowing that, hey, we brought a gold medal. We won the war. Yeah. <laughs> Like the American has never lost the Olympics in a hundred years. Yeah. But we stopped it. You right stopped there them. In their, <laughs> yeah. country, in their country and yeah. their land and took the people. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, and you know what? I was young at the time, but I remember that victory. It was such a cool thing to watch on TV. The expression on all your faces uh, at the end was just, it brought smiles, you know, like all around for everyone to see. I think that's the joy of, of you know, seeing what the Olympic Games can bring is, is uh, just that camaraderie, the, the respect between athletes and, uh, you know, that feat, just the feat of beating the Americans in their own country. Yeah. It, it must have been a, a, an unbelievable feeling. It's a great reward. It's like, <clears throat> <laughs> but I'm watching I was watching all the Olympic trials all over the world this week, on the weekend mm -hmm. and right now it's similar US is dominant in all events all sports Yeah. So right now I look at the, the Olympics the 25 year anniversary is USA versus the rest of the world in yeah. a sense because yeah. they have a potential medalist in every sport every in every event, category yeah. right so mm -hmm. to, to see for the rest of the world going and snap out and if they can sweep it. Woo! <laughs> so, I, I mean, for any any country, it's it must be an incredible feeling knowing that, you know, the amount of dollars that are dumped into uh, training uh, in on different levels in different countries, especially the United States. Uh, it must be very interesting um, for people to know that, you know, when a country defeats a country that's primarily funded for doing this it's a it's an incredible uh feat for for anybody and they must feel incredible knowing that you know i barely got a dime doing this i trained my whole life just in my backyard and and you know like it's and then you go and and you and you you surpass these great athletes which is amazing uh i think that's again i you know that's one of the questions i i was uh in the sense where um oh, that kind of leads me to my third question is uh, so I know you had mentioned some pieces that, okay, may not have been the, you know, the best uh, representation uh, coming from the games when you were there, but what was the best part 
uh, for you going, and I mean, let's throw in tournaments as well. What was the best part when you were competing in tournaments uh, alongside the Olympics? What, what was the feeling between both that you just enjoyed and loved so much? I always love and enjoy representing my country. I remember when my first, um, as a junior, I was always ranked number one in the world. And I always get hurt at the Olymp at the trials yeah. or on my birthday. Oh. <laughs> and then you're gonna have the trials on my birthday. And <laughs> I was never good at running in the rain. I always uh. get hurt. So I never really made my my debut on the world stage as a junior athlete. So as soon as we came out of junior, I made my first uh, senior team. And it's okay. very difficult to transition from junior to a senior athlete. So I went in and I ended up uh, third in a hundred meter at the, uh, the trials at the world championship in 93. And uh, I remember after the trials, we went to the hotel and to try on our uniform. Ah. The first time I get to put on the uniform. It's like my, my shield of honor is like Avenger, you know, a superhero, Marvel, you know? <laughs> and uh, I remember when I put on the top and I was in the bathroom and I looked in the mirror yeah, I started crying, right? Uh, couple, yeah. couple, uh, <laughs> <laughs> couple of uh, teardrops came into my eye. Yeah, and, and you know when you have a happy tears, you yeah. watch a movie, and it's like, oh snap, I'm crying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from crying to bawling. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, what yeah. happened? The emotions. Yeah, that came over me, mm -hmm. knowing all the struggles and the obstacles that yeah. you went through for three, four years, right? Yeah. And to finally put on that jersey, that uniform that you wanted so badly that you, you sacrificed so much to put it on. Yeah. And go out. And so every time I get that opportunity to put on that jersey yearly, um, bring joy to my heart knowing that I'm going to bring smiles to Canada. I'm going to bring yeah. smiles around the world. I'm going to be able to let people know that dreams can come true. I'm going to be able to let people know that no matter what remote areas you are in, no matter what obstacles you're in, what struggles you're in, yeah. you can still find a way because they're your that's, dream. That's awesome. Right. So that's something I've always loved. And the next wonderful thing that I love about competing globally is when I hear the Canadian anthem. <laughs> the sweetest song of all time. <laughs> You're like, we don't even get up on my chair and start singing. <laughs> and I, I can imagine wearing, you know, being awarded the gold medal and, and, and listening to the anthem come up. It must have been such a, a euphoric experience. Um, yeah, I can't imagine, you know, and I mean, that speaks a lot, right? Like in the world where, you know, there is a lot of struggle and, you know, there's a lot of hurdles and, um, you know, if you really, really put your mind to it, you could accomplish, you know, your dream, which is a really amazing message coming from yours, from, from Olympians across, you know, uh, the generations of Olympians that we've had. Um, they've had that stage to say, hey, look, this is my journey. This is what I've been able to do. And I've worked extremely hard to get here. And I want to share it with all of you, you know, like that's such a cool thing. That's amazing. Um, Sorry, I'm still getting teared up. <laughs> well, and I mean, I think I think this one, this one might be, well, it's not a tough question, but um, this one is a, is a pretty typical question is, uh, what does it take? I mean, it kind of goes back to our conversation, but what does it take to be a professional runner? Be coachable. Be coachable. Cool. Be open-minded. Mm -hmm. Be motivated. Cool. A coach cannot want it more than you. You have ah, to be more than the coach. Than the right? coach. That's that, really cool. Yeah. That sets the tone and allow the coach to use his expertise to as a tool and a vessel to help you get there. You can't okay. come to practice want the coach to motivate. You get you got the wrong scenario. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and you have to be able to willing to compete. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you're not willing to compete at any level just go do a fitness class or whatever, mm -hmm. because no matter what you do in life, yeah. you're going to be taught competition. Yeah. Um, Cause no matter if you're making a team, you got to bring a game. If it's a classroom, you got to bring a game. I know yeah. I have a air blast off BC and the average um, athletes, their grade point is about 92. The wow. average group there. Yeah. Right. So when I have 
athletes, like for instance, went into the University of Toronto and mm -hmm. scholarship, and they didn't get into one program. Yeah. Because they have a 96 average in that subject. Yeah. From high school all the way through, but they needed a 98 to get in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And these are athletes that are ranked nationally and internationally in sports and yeah. carrying a 96. Which is, yeah. And they didn't yeah. get in because it required 98. Like so two points. So the guy who's yeah. doing the academic, right, at that level got the 98. And imagine yeah. there's an athlete's carrying a 96. Yeah. Oh, it's going to sting. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So much right? pressure. Yeah. Right? And then you leave there and you go into the workforce. And no matter what you do, you will always be in competition at some form. So yeah. they have to learn that um, tool at an early age, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Those are the things that make it competitive because, yes, within competition, losing, it's okay to lose, but long yeah. as you're learning from it, right? Exactly. So those attributes, when you put them all together, um, it makes a great uh, future Olympian. And this city, I've been here three years, and I <laughs> see a lot of raw talents but they don't believe it and they don't see it. And the parents don't encourage that process um, or they think in only one direction. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, yeah. we're only going hockey. Oh, yeah. We're only going basketball. But I said, that's fine. But when you put athleticism around that person, yeah. right? I'm not going to teach you basketball. Yes, I know how to play basketball. I don't know how to skate. But at the end of the day, if I can put the tools to make your sport a lot better, yeah, that's what it's about. But they're starting to wake up now. It's starting to, we're starting to get a lot of hockey players, the basketball players, volleyball players doing the program. Yeah, because now they're starting to wake up. But it took almost three years for me to re-educate people in Sudbury when the, yeah. rest the province, the rest of the country, is got multi-sport athletes who are doing track as the part base. Yeah, and, you know when you talk to Gretzky, Crosby, and a lot of these guys, they have a speed coach. They yeah. Track <laughs> yeah. Right, so um, even the Sudbury great female hockey players, they did track and field. Yeah. Right, because yeah. it is the fundamentals and athleticism that you can transfer over to other sports. Yeah, like the, the takeoff, right? Just just in the takeoff for it's any sport. Because I... when you think of speed, right? Most people think speed is um, fast. When you say mm -hmm. fast, they think it's speed. When you think quickness, they think it's speed. It's not. Mm -hmm. Speed is the ultimate. Yeah. If you have speed, you have all the pieces, majority of the pieces yeah. to, to, be, uh, to have speed. So speed is from one distance to the next. Yes. So in most sports, they average about 20 to 40 yards, right? Yeah. They do the benchmarks. So within there, quickness is not speed. Mm -hmm. It's a component of speed. Yeah. Speed is not speed. It's a component of speed. Fast yeah. is not speed. It's a component of speed. Yeah. Ability is a component of speed. Your mental is a component of the speed. So when you're okay. thinking of speed, you're bringing all the pieces and you break it out through a, a period of time and put them all back together. Mm -hmm. And now you have speed. You've got everything. Per perfect. Perfecting all those things will bring the speed essentially yeah. and working on those, those elements. Right. And which is really cool. And I mean, that's essential to any sport, um, which, which I think is amazing. Um, and I mean, like the other thing too, I could just, again, you know, I love these questions magically just kind of start flowing uh, one into the other in our conversation, which is amazing. Um, the other one, the other question is, okay, so how do you get over, which is, again, just what we talked about. How do you get over fear during competition or fear of, you know, uh, maybe getting into your own head a little bit too much? Perfect. I'm going to give you my 5F. Okay. The 5F is the faith. Yeah. Whatever your spiritual belief is. I call that the calm within the storm. Yeah. Okay? The next one uh, is fear. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to figure the motivational factor. Why are you doing that sport? Why are you here? Is it for you? You doing it for your parents? Are you doing it because you don't want to lose? Are you doing it to to gain a record? What is the motivational factor? Okay. The third F we need to address is favors. We mm. all need favors. We need to ask. We need to get help here. Don't think just because you're here, you're gonna do it alone. There's people around you to support you, to guide mm. you, to help you in the classroom, on the field, or whatever it is. Right. The fourth one is focus. 
Yeah. You have to focus on that task. There's going to be dream killers. There's going to be obstacles. Mm, but you yeah. got to get back into the focus lane. Yeah. And the fifth one where we see um, at least half of the athletes get to is the frustration piece. Mm, mm -hmm. So if you're not focused and not doing all the other pieces and holding yourself accountable, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. So to answer your question, what makes you greater is more practice and repetition of the good behaviors yeah. allows confidence to build. Very right? cool. Yeah. As, you, as you train more and get better more, the confidence build the same way. Mm -hmm. But while mm -hmm. you're training, you got to train all the pieces, the mindset, yeah. the stamina, the character building, all the other pieces, the championship mind, the, the, the little things to the drawing boards that you see, you know, um, intimidation, all the different pieces, game, game readiness, competition readiness, what it looks like on you know, the final show of the biggest piece of the, the championship. How does that other person produce? What caused them to produce and take a piece of that and go practice that? All those preparation builds confidence to be successful. That's if you're amazing. going out in competition at the highest level thinking about all this process, you shouldn't be there. You're not ready. Mm -hmm. Your yeah. job is to go out and have fun now because yeah. the work is done. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's that, so that's what I say in that area for your answer is, Preparation yep. e meets opportunity equals success. That's, I mean, you know what, bro, uh, did it, you know, when I inserted motivate, well, not insert, when I, when I had mentioned motivational speaker, you, you know, you're excellent. I'm pumped up just from that conversation. Uh, I want to go do something right now. I want to go running. I want to go uh, work out, do something, but that's, uh, that's really cool, Robert. That That's amazing advice for, you know, anyone really like who, who are looking at, you know, trying to accomplish goals, right? I think that's amazing, amazing mindset. Great, great tips. I love that, the five Fs, that's really cool. Um, I think uh, that's amazing. These student, athletes, these student athletes, if they're, and they're in the right age right now, mm -hmm. where they can start thinking of, if yeah. I want to go here. It could be, it doesn't have to go pro. It could be, I'm looking for a scholarship for college. Yeah. I want to play a college career, which is great. I want to play whatever. I want to win a rec league or whatever it is. It start giving you the tools now to think, how am I going to make that happen? A roadmap. Yeah, exactly. Which is really cool. And I mean, you know, the younger you start, the easier it'll be once you're at a competition level when you're a little bit older, I guess, too. Right. So right. I think that's excellent. I mean, you know, when you were younger and again, this again goes into my next question is, you know, what advice would you give your 11 year old self? Uh, right now, I give my eight-year-old son, I gave my daughter, but my daughter didn't really fully wrap onto it. Now she's wish she, could, she did. <laughs> <Listen to laughs> most, 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 most superstars or athletes are that level. Their kids never, their, their kids never listen to their parents. What do you know? But, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, oh. So right now, um, I tell my son and the athletes I train, I just want you to have some fun. Yeah. I want yeah. you to learn and I want you to ask me questions. If you yeah. can ask me questions every day, it tells me you're learning. Yeah, yeah. If I, I ask you to demonstrate or do something or ask a question, be the first to put your hand up. Yeah. Because when you're in a group setting, it's very difficult to get the, the spotlight. Yeah. So you have to create your own spotlight. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong or right. That instructor, that teacher, that student, that coach is going to pause and say, guess what? You know what? You need to do this. You need to do that. Mm -hmm. You just got to individualize feedback critique on yourself yep. that can help you. It's always okay to watch other people getting critique, mm -hmm. but it's always better for you to be critiqued. Exactly. Yeah. Okay? And so, in taking in the critique, ah, right? And you got to be willing to accept the critique. So you can grow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So that's and what I my son, have some fun. Be yeah. open. And the crazy thing, after every practice, I said, Daddy, um, how do I do? So that's on the way home. <laughs> I'm able to give him feedback and say, son, you did a great job here. Um, just listen a little bit more over here and you're going to be awesome. And just yeah. continue learning and developing. And I, I appreciate you asking me questions, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because now we can have a different dialogue on the way home. And I think that's what the parents has to do as well. When yeah. the kids leave the ice or leave the court on the way home, give me, say to the child, give me two things that you took away that's great about the practice that you're going to move forward with. 
if mm-hmm. you one thing that you had some challenges where you can turn into an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And always keep the positive vibes on it and make it a teachable moment. And not necessarily sometimes they need to give their own opinion. Sometimes the athletes just need someone to listen. Which is really great. And I mean, as a father, um, I think that's excellent tips to give parents, especially with, with who have kids in sporting, who sports. I, I coach hockey with my son and, and I feel like, you know, uh, these are all great tips for, for, for parents to, to learn and, you know, like, you know, get the kids to ask the questions, you know, and, and I think that's really excellent advice for, um, for, you know, children who are in sports and for their parents. I think that's amazing. Um, definitely really enlightening uh, information right there for sure. Well, one thing I love about my training is I invite parents to practice mm. because I'm turning them into my assistant coaches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I didn't say for them to go and coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm not around, mm-hmm. something should happen on Fort Bidler, knock on wood, that I'm no longer in this world. You've got information and tools Mm -hmm. make yourself a better coach or a resource to your kids and or uh, if you're at a competition where the coach is not around you can help and step in by practicing those good behaviors so that's why i love parents there plus i put them on the hot seat half the time (laughs) (laughs) and then the the athletes are like "Uh uh uh-huh uh-huh now i create some competition at home (laughs) yeah exactly yeah yeah homework homework for the whole family absolutely absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> which is actually this is again uh great this this is an amazing interview i'm so like i'm so pumped about this um again this this is something we already just kind of chatted about but how does it feel being able to pass on your wisdom and training to kids specifically i know one thing in this world information is probably one of the biggest commodities that we have yeah information you got real estate You've got banking, libraries, right? <laughs> and library is information. Yeah. Outside of the library, the next best thing is to get it from someone's head. Yeah. If they didn't write it down. Yeah. Right. So the, the ability to pass on your knowledge and experience to someone is phenomenal. Yeah. But that person has to be open to be able to receive it. Yes. And able to say, you know what? I too can make it over there. But guess what? I'm utilizing the roadmap. I think what makes me unique as a child was I had, as a teenager, uh, I had friends that are in the 70s. Oh, okay. I had friends in the 60s, 50s, 40s, 20s, and my age group. Yeah. And I look at all of them as mentors. So I look at who made the mistake. I said, oh, don't want to make that one. Don't want, <laughs> don't want the results of that one. Right? And I go to the next person. I go to the next person. Yeah. And I take the collective of the group, what worked. Yes. So now I try to go that area. Don't mind. I do made it. I did make a couple of mistakes along the way. Mm-hmm. But I made less than I made more based on I used those as guidance. Yeah. yeah so, so information is everything. That's amazing. And you were doing that in your teenagers, just surrounding yourself with the people that can make you grow, which is really cool. I was a child, right? That's and, incredible. You know, a lot of my friends were a lot, even now, my, a lot of my friends are at least 10, 15, 20 years older than I am. And I okay. still seek advice on different things, right? Business, yeah. a personal, family thing, because there's no blueprint to be a father. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. then we get together and put a father support group together. And then we, we said, okay. And especially what I've found out for your kids, for some reason, um, age nine, 11, 13, 15 is a troublesome year. It's like yeah. they're, they're in the, the mood to, they have to prove something or something's causing disruption in their system that navigate and they go off the rail. And if you can get them through those years safely, mm-hmm. woo, yeah. as a parent, you're like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I did my job. <laughs> 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 so I only have one more left to go. I mean, he's at eight now. He's calm, but watch next year. He's going to try to challenge me now. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the fun parts of being a dad, right? Yeah, <laughs> Our parent in general. Seven. So we know nine is coming again. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. My son is also uh, um, 
is going well in the same age category as well. So I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> um, as a resource. Yeah, yeah, which is fantastic. This is so cool. I am oh, I'm so blown away by all of this. Um, actually, we're actually down to our last question, and this was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we sped through this. <laughs> um, this is actually not so much a sports question. Uh, this is more, I guess. Uh, this was a fun one to get, but it was. What was your favorite book when you were young? Listen, folks, I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, I started school when I was about nine. So I roll up into school and big boy in a little class. Um, so reading was not a fun thing for me. But I do remember my favorite book, which was um, Three Little Pigs. <laughs> <laughs> the classic yeah the classic <laughs> um, so i never read a lot when i left jamaica to come here mm -hmm. i was going in grade um grade six so when i got here they told me my reading was at a grade two level okay yeah so i had to get put in a special class with a big boy and a small a small <laughs> right but my math which i look back then we call it arithmetic Yes, uh, yeah. Was one of my favorite, right? I love, mm. math, I love numbers, I love calculation. Um, yeah. So that was at a grade five level. But yeah. everything else was at a lower level. So um, some of the tools that I used was to get better was I did some acting. Ah. So I learned to read and memorize. Yeah. And, and I end up, a lot of the things that I like to read was cartoons. Okay. So I started in a cartoon section of the Sudbury Star. Okay. And then I worked my way up. Um, my mother then was a nurse. She wanted to be a doctor, so she got the medical book. Wow. And books, the book. So she'd bring those home. <laughs> and I Stacks. got scared because I look at one word, it's like 15, 18, 19, 20 something letters. Yeah. And then I have to break them down in syllables, spell them. So I have 15 per week, per day that I have to learn and study. So wow. at each week, I get an exam from my mom to spell the words and put them in 10. That's in awesome. No, but I hated it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> As a kid, oh, I, yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa, boy, when it's time to read, I started sweating bullets. <laughs> the crazy thing is, sometimes you want to do something. Yeah. But with the guidance of your parents, they know better because I've lived more. Yeah. When I started learning and doing contracts and negotiation, when I was in grade nine, I signed my first contract with Nike. Wow. Yeah. Athletes. I was able to spend time with my lawyer and go through the contracts and Amazing. learn the language of the law. So yeah. by the time I reached grade 12, I, I did all my contracts with sponsors. That's incredible. That you did. Right. Just a all learning the sponge. All the lettering. I'm like, no, take that out. Worse, I don't even understand why that is. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do something I know. Right? I but know just that contractual is. world is, is complex. Like you need to know how it works. And I mean, you're, 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 this is your world. And, and you need to make sure that, you know, in your career, that you have that you're you're being backed up in a proper way so the fact that you were able to uh be like i said you're you're a learning sponge like it just you know throughout your life and i mean this is incredible that you were able to understand and and kind of do your own contract negotiations at that young age which is incredible that's amazing so overall sometimes you don't like certain things mm -hmm. right or you may not understand it at the time but you have to trust your your older person who have experienced to give you the tools that one day you might end up using. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, I still don't love reading. I'll read now because I have to read. I'll mm -hmm. read because I have to deal with contracts and different things, right? To understand language. But I won't just pick up a book and read. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and reading I, is everywhere too, yeah. really. <laughs> crazy thing. Uh, one of my old boss, he says to me, uh, each year we get uh, books to read. Right. And each time you finish a book, you get like three thousand dollars bonus. Oh, wow. I'm like, keep your money. <laughs> because I don't want to read it. It's my own personal time. But mm -hmm. what we end up figuring out, I said, you know what? Is there a summary of that book I can read? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that 15, 20 minutes. So now they send me the summary and I'll read the summary and I'll write a report based on the summary. On the summary and I'll yeah. pay $1,500 bonus instead. And I said, yeah, That's yeah. 
compromise. <laughs> it's a give, yeah, your, your contractual uh, training. <laughs> you know, so now we realize, okay, take me 15, 20 minutes, boom. I can write a book report on that and then mm -hmm. submit it. And I'm usually correct. And I give examples and I'm done. Yeah. In the box, took me 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to read a book for two hours, three hours of my time. <laughs> right. So, so I don't mind reading in short mm -hmm. amount. But when you give me long, you're going to put me to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, again, it all depends on what you're reading too. Well, what you have to read, I guess, is the other so, thing. I'm being honest. I, I'm being honest, students. I'm just being honest with you. But yes. Remember, education is the key to success. It's very Sports cool. open up doors and opportunities. Yes. All right. Make sure you get your grades up. Okay. Cool. Don't play around. Do it now. Don't wait till later. You're going to get that A. It's too late. You need to have a body of work to yeah. lead up to the end. And everything you've just summarized in our conversation, I feel all goes hand in hand, right? Like what you could take, you know, on the track, you can easily bring into the classroom. That same mentality for winning and success and, and training and practicing all those key things. Uh, you know, like I know myself when I was younger, uh, I had trouble in math and, and I, I worked really hard to try and, and, and learn it as much as I can, even though I had difficulties. And I think that that is great is, is a, an overall an attitude that never changes throughout generations. You keep practicing uh, at what, you know, you may not be the strongest at and you'll get better. And, and I think, I think those are, are all great key things. And this was, this was amazing, Robert. This is such a cool interview. I'm so thrilled to have, to be here and be able to do this uh, on behalf of the Greater Sudbury Public Library and, and all our young patrons out there who are watching for TD Summer Reading Club. Um, I, I did want to touch on a couple of things before we ended our conversation. Uh, again, uh, thank you so much, so much for doing this uh, with us. It's, uh, it's been an amazing Q&A. Um, and again, uh, I want to thank you for all your amazing accomplishments, what you've done for our country uh, and, and what you do in multiple communities. Um, I think it's an amazing gift that you have that you're able to, you know, uh, keep going through your life with these gifts and it's amazing. Um, I do want to give everyone more information uh, about uh, Air Blast Off, which is Robert's um, speed, speed clinic. <laughs> um, so I do encourage everyone to, to go visit airblastoff.ca, um, right? Airblastoff.ca? Dot com. Airblastoff.com. Airbla Airblast <laughs> we got groups in Jamaica, Vancouver, GTA, and Sudbury. That's amazing. So airblastoff.com, if you want to find out more information on how you can participate with Robert and the amazing teachings he has to offer. Um, I also want to thank all the viewers today who are watching us. Um, this is a pre-recorded video, but uh, you know, I'm, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and I know that uh, we're all, everyone's enjoying it for sure. Um, so follow us all summer long for more Summer Reading Club. This July, like I said, we are uh, uh, celebrating sports and uh and we were very excited to have um, an amazing sports star with us uh in robert esme today um so again thank you so much robert any parting uh words before we uh, finish yes two things um we're celebrating the 25th anniversary um just log on to my website and underneath the store you can order the blast off collection uh for 25th anniversary it's gonna be awesome very esme, cool esme, esme what a performance boom so that's one Number two, um, I'm able to bring to you guys something that has never been done before, uh, personalized feedback platform critique, C-R-I-T-I-Q.com. Cool. You get a personalized feedback if you're having any challenges, any issues, no matter what it is in school, um, sports, we're gonna have experts from around the world on the site where you can upload your questions or your video and they'll critique it and give it back to you for, um, for not next to nothing. Um, for me, for the first 10 months, because um, I have 10 causes, each month, part of my critique goes to a different charity. So that's, that's amazing. what I'm doing each month. I'm going to pick a, a charity in the city that's close to my heart and give back to those. So when people book me for that month, it's going to that specific charity. So we yep. also use it to help people. Well, yep. some people also use it to make additional income. But uh, you get a personalized feedback from one of the world's best. That's phenomenal. Um, what an amazing uh, application this is gonna be for uh, the public all around the world. I think that's incredible, especially parents with young kids, um, which would be very cool, especially learning from the best. It's developed in Sudbury, going worldwide. 
Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. That's incredible. And I mean, like, again, thank you so much for all your contributions to our community. I think that uh, we're very uh, honored to have you live in our community and do all that you do. Um, and I, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing more coming. And I know Robert Esme's not done yet. He's got lots, lots coming from, uh, from yourself, I'm sure, uh, in the future. So we're very much looking forward to seeing all your new accomplishments uh, coming for sure. All right. God bless you guys. Be safe, peace, love, and happiness wherever you are. Blast Thank you up. so much. Right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>